bad good. Tacky wackies. Tacky wacky, wacky tacky. Look at that boy, that looks professional. Look at them gaps, air gaps. <laughs> that's right? Professional, all right. Well, that's so the air can escape while you're welding, right? Exactly, yeah. So I don't have to actually like purge it or nothing. Yeah. Oh, Mikey, Mikey about, Mikey about to make her nice, looking like he's putting the pancake on the tube. I ain't putting nothing on there right now. Mike's over here doing the weld isle on the panel. We're gonna go and powder coat some travel limiters so hey, you want a pop tart? It's strawberry tell him nobody wants a pop tart man i'm already having sugar crash from all the freaking easter bunnies i bought yesterday did y'all see all the easter bunnies i bought the dollar store they marked down their easter bunnies the day after easter so you got to go hit them up look we just bought the store out all of these we bought the whole freaking rack so we're gonna clean these up and get them ready to powder coat. So I got in Ed a box of the, uh, from the China Buffet. So he's always complaining about not having stuff here. So we got him some Chinese uh, ribbit guns. This is what I use at the house. I ain't, all jokes aside, that, that thing's good. I ain't never had a problem with it. It don't like to cut past like the one eight rivets, but uh, that thing's good. It'll work good for what we got. And then Ed, boy, he put me onto this thing. This thing is the truth. Uh, for Harbor Freight. This thing is uh, extremely bright. He bought one and brought it to the shop and I've been using it for, uh, uh, for different things at the shop. And so I decided to go ahead and grab one for me. And then my paint gun cleaning kit, my toothbrush for cleaning the paint gun right here. This brush is like five or six years old and it's starting to get a curve in it. I'll have to show y'all. I'll have to show y'all that here in a second. Look, let me show, actually watch this. So I decided to go ahead and pick up another kit because the toothbrush is just so amazing this thing. Like everything else we can throw away in the trash, but all of the other little cleaning things, they're amazing also. But if you come here, look at this toothbrush. Look at that. That is crazy. It's like curved from like scrubbing the sides of cups and stuff like that over like five years. Dude, this thing has some freaking memories on it. If this thing could talk, it would, uh, it would tell some stories, my dude. Uh, but we got a nice fresh one right here that we're going to replace her with from the Chinese buffet. Um, what else do we get in the China jump box? I should have stock in Harbor Freight. This is literally a Harbor Freight order. Like they just mail you a whole box full of stuff. So we got two more clamps, little clamps that we needed. I think I'm missing two. And then we got our powder coat in. So this was actually the powder coat to replace Mike's powder coat that we used, but that didn't happen fast enough because now I got to powder coat more stuff. So now I'm gonna burn this up again. Mike's replacement's gonna get burned up and then I'm gonna have to order him another one. That's the way it goes around here. But we're gonna powder coat all these limiters. So I'm gonna get these wiped down with wax and grease remover because when they come from the factory, they have uh, uh, oil all over them from the manufacturing process. And so you definitely wanna make sure you get that clean. We've already hung our uh, water, water neck spout thing for the uh, thing. We taped up our threads on the end of it, the AN threads, because we don't wanna get powder all over that. So I'm curious to how this does in the oven because I don't think I'm gonna peel it off. I probably should. It's probably gonna make a freaking mess. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I can get it peeled off, but we are going to powder coat that and all these. So let me get all these cleaned up and hung on the rack and we'll throw these things in the oven. All right. So we've got our powder coat loaded in our gun. We went over this now on the how to powder coat uh, on the wing video. So if you look back at the wing video on powder coating the wings, we did more of a step-by-step. -step. Basically, uh, if you already have the kit, you put your powder coat in the gun and you're going to connect the ground lead to each item. Now, when I first had done this, I had a bare metal rack and bare metal hooks and then the items, and you could just put your ground on the rack, but the, and then it'll make a ground through all of the hooks and everything. But the problem with that is after I did a couple powder coating jobs, the hooks actually now are powder coated also, so they no longer make a connection. So now to, so I don't have to change the racks out every single time. The only way I know to do it is to actually individually ground each part while I'm powder coating it and get that part powder coated and then put it in the oven. Or so, here goes you Mike. Can just clean the crap off the rack. Yeah, or I can just clean, clean the crap off the rack. And make some new hooks every time. And make some new hooks every time. But really doesn't sound appealing to me as Mike is saying. <laughs> so 
we went individually ground each item because even though I'm a painter, I'm not big into the prep or the cleaning process at all. I really don't like it at all. Like I really don't like to waste my time cleaning or prepping for anything unless it's a good paying customer job. So this is not a good paying customer job. This is actually totally opposite. This is a negative paying job where I'm losing money. So I'm not cleaning the freaking rack. So let's get some powder on it. All right. So I don't know what you're doing, but you take your Chinese uh, powder sprayer and you're going to push your ground pedal and we're going to ground it on that. Whoa, that was too much powder. That was a ton of powder. Whoa. All right, so I got to play with the uh, air pressure setting. So as you can see, I'm already making a freaking mess. Most of this stuff, like if you would have some kind of pan or plastic down where you could catch this and then pick it all up and put it back in a container and save it and not waste money and sweep all your money out the door, that'd be really nice. However, I don't care. I really don't care. I hate this. So I just want to get this done and over with. Too lazy, as Mike's saying. God. This Harbor Freight powder coat stuff, like it works for small parts and I'm a little bit impatient. So I don't like the whole like shaking. Woo! I don't like the whole shaking the powder and dusting it on lightly. Like I'm kind of more of a paint gun type of person of just going in. But if you would like get this on nice and even little coats, and yes, that's supposed to have the ground on that piece, but I don't even care. All right, so let's get the ground on this other one. One more to do. I mean, it, it works. I don't know what I paid for the powder coat. Mike said that he thinks it's like $20 a jug. So that's not bad. I mean, that's like two cans of spray paint. So there is the mess that I'm always left with when I get done powder coating. It's that giant mess. And we're just gonna open the shop and take the leaf blower and just bye bye. And get it get it out of here that's why i hate power coating if it was a customer job that i was getting like you know paid and i was making some money and not just spending money and losing time and all that good stuff then it would be a little bit different you know and then we actually take our time do it right and do a good quality job but sadly for me whenever that's my stuff i just want to get it done so never tell me to treat your job like i would treat my job it's not good so we're gonna let the oven preheat uh, we're looking for 400 degrees on the oven that's what i'm gonna do it at this time and i think i'm gonna do it for like 15 20 minutes i believe that's what i might have done like last time so they need instruction on the back of the uh can over there. <laughs> actually they're not they're not no oh man but they do come in the um the packaging the, the packaging is, uh, no I, and i do have the instruction the manual powder puffer comes in yeah i do have the instruction manual what ed you look so dirty. It is. Anyways. Yeah. These nuts. So yeah, I checked it last time whenever I powder coated apart and I'm pretty sure it was like 350, 400 for like 15, 20 minutes or something. But that's what I'm gonna do it for. So 400, 400 for like 20 minutes, I think. Maybe I'll go double check that in the instructions. Well, that's a good way to start it off. So here's our pieces out of powder coat. Um, that was probably where I uh, had it clamped and didn't get it 100%. I mean, they're they're good enough for me. Like I said, if you throw if you blow this stuff on smoother and not as you know as much as I blew it on, then you don't get this. This unevenness comes from it being clumped on. Like all of this is clumps, okay? So the more you take your time and the smoother you get it, the better. I don't care about looks on this. This is behind the tire. Um, you know, I just didn't want the stuff to rust up and spray paint will wear right off really fast. So what I got to do now is I have tried to put this one in, as you can see, okay? And being it is a little rough and textured, it doesn't quite go in and out smooth because of the extra buildup on it because it is a tight fit. So what we're gonna do is, I figured I would just show y'all before I do it, and then y'all think that I did it for some other freaking reason. 
uh, same with this you can see where i started to put it in and i wore it in and out a couple times and you know it's it that's not to the metal that's just scuffing up the top of the powder coat so what i want to do is on these the two with the pinholes in them these are going to be on the inside of the tube i'm going to go in there to the sink right now and we're going to take some 1000 and we're just going to wet sand these until they'll slip in and out of the outer tube um, correctly that way i don't have to do it at the house uh, so i just kind of wanted to show you all that out here in the sunlight before i wet sand them all up you know how they turned out all right so what a pain in the butt um, but i got it so lots of sanding with the uh, 400 grit on the wet sandpaper basically i just did it in the sink you can see it took some of it off along the edges which that's fine because as you pull these in and out anyway an adjustment you're eventually gonna wear it down but these things are slick now um and it's still extremely snug to get them in and out so i'm not gonna be able to do it one-handed but you can twist and turn them and pull them in and out uh so they will go in and out um also i think a lot of it's coming from inside this tube so when you're blowing the powder coat on it obviously this is uh grounded so some powder coats going inside there and getting in there i did roll up a piece of sandpaper and put it in there and twist and turn it around but i can't get it out and the whole time you know i can't get it all out the whole time that i was wet sanding all this i had water flowing under it to flush it all off another thing i did is i actually took this piece and stuck it inside of here and actually uh basically turned it like this and worked it in and out under the water so it was flushing it and kind of cleaning the inside of this off using this so um, they will go in there they will go in and out this one my hands are also slippery you can see right here no, see that's you have to twist it now it's kind of like in a little bind so you have to put a little force on it with two hands and twist it but um they do go in and out i have checked that so uh, once you get them on the car and like i said once they you know they'll be traveling up and down in the car uh they'll free themselves right up really quick so it won't be won't be nothing you just got to get them where they'll eventually go in and out so if you don't want to do all that don't powder coat your travel limiters i just uh mike said that with the chrome molly that it won't rust right away but it will rust over time so i didn't want to deal with rust these look amazing now they'll have the chrome ends on them i'm gonna just rattle can the little end brackets but I just wanted the sliding up and down, you know, this will be extremely durable uh, for a while and the outside will stay, you know, looking good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, that was that was worth it. So they don't look like crap under the car. All right. Welcome back. So we're at the house now. It's like one minute we're at the shop, one minute we're at the house back and forth. Yo, y'all are killing me, dude. Y'all are straight up killing me. I redo all my brake lines. Happy with it. And then y'all bust my bubble and inform me that I need to get rid of the copper brake lines because they expand. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I appreciate it though. I appreciate it a, a ton. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to rock and roll with what we got. Okay. You have to remember that this car, I've never made a pass in my life. I've never done drag racing in my life. I've had a couple of very basic street car, street cars, very basic AC, you know, like just loud crap i guess you can say loud slow crap um and i've built all kinds of different things but i've never had an actual race car or a drag car so what we're going to do is dude it's going to take a year to figure this out like let's be realistic we're not coming out the gate and running you know mid fives or no crazy stuff like that i don't think so now i've heard stories of people on their fourth pass you know of their life you know really just coming natural Let's get this thing together. Let's get this thing running. We've got to get the headers done. We've got to get it over to TKM to get the hub dyno. We got to figure out what buttons to push on the steering wheel, trans brake line lock. We got to figure all that out. We got to figure out how to do a burnout. Um, this is all basic stuff that'll probably just go like that. Obviously, one, two times and you got it. Got to figure that out. Um, got to figure out how to make a pass down the track. Already know how to. But when you actually go to do it, you're going to mess up. Okay. You're going to. You're gonna you're gonna make all kinds of mistakes probably. Um, if not, you know you'll get it right in a couple of times, but it's gonna take some practice. So you're not going out the backside at 150 miles an hour on your first second times out. I don't think. Um, so let's get this car together. Let's get everything up and running. Uh, we still have a long ways to go, and then what we'll do is, you know, we'll we'll go back down the checklist. And we'll start upgrading and changing changing stuff over such as the brake lines um we will go back y'all comment what you think we need to upgrade these two 
Um, I'm guessing y'all are saying like steel brake lines. A lot of people are just commenting, you know, no copper, not copper. I get it. Um, but let's just keep what we got for now because I don't know if the car will go over 100 miles an hour out the backside, you know, the first dozen times out or first couple times out. So let's not get carried away. Um, I've already built way more, which is good, way more than I need. Um, but yeah, let's get this thing up and running and y'all keep giving me advice, tips, pointing out stuff like you see like that. Cause I'm taking note of it all. I appreciate it more than anything. Um, I, before YouTube, I was really stressed about a lot of this stuff because y'all have already learned and seen now that I don't know a ton. I can build it, but I don't know a ton, you know, like I can run brake lines. I can make them look decent if I want to, but I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to use copper you know, and we'll figure we'll figure this out as we go i appreciate everything y'all are helping me with and pointing out and um there's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to go to the track and we're going to uh videotape and we're going to record and then you know we're going to find we're going to find problems and we're going to find issues and we're going to have to go back and make changes um and add stuff and switch stuff up there's probably going to be a lot of things that break and fell and you know we're we're going to push this china buffet to the limit man um you know, nah, the, the motor's got all nice stuff on it, but y'all you, you know that I have uh, skimped on a lot of fittings or different odds and ends that we can't get off of eBay. So we'll see where the weakest, weakest links are and what starts breaking and, you know, what needs to be replaced. And then we'll have a bunch of videos coming for, um, you know, fixing stuff, changing stuff, and upgrades, tons of upgrades. We'll never stop improving. We'll never stop upgrading. Um, you know, I'm not really into building something and then dumping it. So we're in this for the long haul together, hopefully. So let's keep growing, but let's get to what we got. Let me show you what we got. So just brought these home, you know, I just showed y'all, they threw them back together. They turned out decent. I do got some shipping on the ends. Uh, um, this thing had lube, not lube, um, like oil or grease all in it from assembly. So the ends, you know, chipped a little and I didn't get the ends good. If y'all remember um, I showed you that I grounded to the very end and it, it was dark and I didn't get it great, but I mean, it's, you, I mean, I sanded on the sliding part right here and like tried to take the powder coat off and it was really durable, even wet sanding it. So they'll hold up fine. You know, might have a little chipping or touching up to do at the ends, but, uh, it's no big deal. Dude, you're talking about Harbor Freight powder coating system. So I'm really happy with it. I'm pleased with it. You know, it's exactly what I wanted. So we got, I went ahead, I mean, I got a handful of these. Let's not spool. And then, you know, we got, we got that. So let's see here, got some oil on it. This thing right here, that bolt, I need to get like a rubber. Mike said instead of using Teflon tape, which I probably will go ahead and just use it to get started with. But he said, just put a, a you know, a washer, like a rubber a plastic washer underneath there to seal it off. So maybe we'll do that, but we're going to get this back on tonight uh, because that piece is done now that it's powder coated. And that thing, I mean, that thing turned out amazing. I mean, we took a factory, you know, water neck and turned it into an AN fitting with a bleed off port. So for the Coyote. So that was freaking amazing. Um, went ahead and cut these pieces. So here was, remember the pieces that we built for the ends of this. We took our, call, you know, our little collar thing, little bracket, and we welded it to a bolt. And basically, this is what we built. Just hit it with some spray paint. You know, the welds aren't the best. I actually did the welds because Mike uh, left for the day. And, you know, I grinded them down just so they'd be tight, but slightly smooth. You're not going to see them. So that's going to go on this end down here. So we're going to mock that up tonight. This looks like it's just going to get welded to the control arm down there. So that's easy peasy. I left my welding helmet at home, so I cannot tack weld that tonight. But hopefully, I remember to bring the welding helmet of tomorrow um the brake line switch if you remember i was like we gotta figure out what connectors they are so this is from jegs for the brake switch this is the plug you need the pigtail that you need um i clicked on it i thought i was just getting pigtail nope i bought a whole freaking kit so i didn't mean to because i don't need another switch but we'll throw it in the trailer you know we'll throw it in the with a brakes over here i've got a whole little plastic thing of all brake related stuff i try to keep everything organized so extra brake switch now but we can light, wire up the brake lights which is kind of exciting because since i put the car together i haven't actually seen it um have brake lights so we are going to at some point get back on the wiring you know i got the headlight harness in in the past videos i need to make one connection on the rear and then we should be able to throw power back to it and see what lights 
what lights are working, you know, and plug it in. I got to install that. So the power still works. The cage, the halo lights, I do have LEDs around the roof and the halo in there. All of that works. So, I mean, the car still has power. It's fine. But let's see here. Our rings that we ordered, terminal If you ring. remember in the other video, I ordered the wrong ones. I don't even remember where they're at. Threw them in storage. Um, so I went back on there and searched again, this time paying attention to the wire size. And bingo. 4AN wire or 4AWG, not AN. Sorry, my brain's on that. Um, four gauge wire to a 5.8 stud. So we can now finish up our couple of ground wires. We have a ground wire that goes on the back of the head that gets one of these. And then we have a ground wire on that head that gets one of these. And then the block is down there and it's already done. So all three of our ground wires will be done. That probably is something I'll go ahead and knock out tonight so that that's off our checklist. And then the beautiful piece from the mailman today look at this guy yo this is what we ordered the other week and they said it was specially ordered for me because they did not have it in stock so they had to i guess call it order it whatever they have to do not a special build or nothing it's just an off-the-shelf pump but it had to be ordered so there is your magnaflow 750 this jewel's got some weight Man, like I did not account for this thing weighing this much or this fire bottle weighing this much on this rear. So after I get all this stuff put on and torque converter in, I'm curious of what the scales are going to look like this time. So this will be going on the rear of the car, though. It's got a nice freaking hardcore bracket. So we'll get this thing up underneath the back of the car maybe tonight and figure out where that goes and then double check my connections. And um, looks like we need to get some wires ran to it. So we got that jewel in. Um, that's cool. Fuel pressure regulator done, fuel system's done. So, I mean, we're rocking and rolling through this stuff, y'all. I told y'all in the video, when we sold the Super Duty, I told y'all that we were going to be... So, well, what I'm thinking for tonight is I'm going to just try to bang down some of this little stuff. Um, you know, just keep banging this stuff down. I still got to do the fire suppression system, but I'm holding off on that for a certain reason. And I'm not going to go over right now. So, we will be going over why i haven't mounted the fire bottle yet it probably is coming back up here not in the trunk but we're going to discuss that here shortly not in today's video